Your event Toastmaster for this segment of TLI is Toastmaster Katrina Harmon, ACB. Please welcome Katrina Harmon. Katrina. Thank you, Donna. Greetings, everyone. Please help me welcome Bob Swarner, DTM Past District Director and Division F Director in Culture Templeton Project Ministry by the District 58 Finance Manager as they present club officer training for secretaries, treasurer, and sergeant at arms. Thank you for that introduction. And let, just let me open by saying thank you for Donna for not only scheduling us right over lunch, but right after Darren LaCroix. I mean, you work hard enough, you get these prime speech slots. So thank you so much for that. But despite that, we're gonna make this as interesting as we can. What we wanna talk about today is what goes on behind the scenes at a lot of Toastmasters clubs. So if you've been an officer for any length of time, this type of scene may look familiar to you. While you have a great and smooth running club, what happens behind the scenes really, really might not look as smooth. Dare I say chaos. So, so here you see the, the, the actors on screen acting and behind the scenes you see fires, you see tables falling over. And sometimes it's a lot like that when you're being a club officer. If you do your job right behind the scenes, no matter how chaotic or troublesome it seems, when you put on the show, it turns out great. And that's especially true for the next three roles we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about secretary, we're gonna talk about treasurer, we're talking about sergeant of arms who might not be the glamor positions as far as officer goes, but they are critical, critical to having a smooth running club. So let's open with secretary. The way we're gonna do this, we are gonna go through the standard slides from Toastmasters International. And that's to level set everybody. A lot of you have seen these slides before and that's okay. But what we wanna make sure is if you're new or if you just wanna be reminded, these are the things that Toastmasters says. However, what we've done since then is also, we did a survey of all the current officers as well as all the uh, officers from last year for these roles. And what that does is give us a feel of how things, how really goes. Cause sometimes what we see from the TI slides aren't always what happens in the real world. So when, this is not gonna be as, as Trent worries about a boring re recitation of slides but it's gonna be advice from the other club members. At the end, we're gonna do a, a Q and A, and in the middle, we're gonna do a couple polls to keep you, uh, see how things are going with everything. So let's get rolling. Can I confirm everybody can still see my slides? You can confirm yes. that and uh, yes, we can. Cool. Secretary, before club meetings, oh, I didn't read these things. Secretary, make sure as you have a, an accurate collection of all the club records. So this is the person that if there's any, you know, minutes that you're keeping on paper, or even if you're keeping on a virtual drive, these are the, this is the person responsible for that. Take minutes at every meeting and you archive those historical records, all right? Most importantly for long-term is you record guests. You get their uh, information, you note that they were there and their contact information. And so that'll help you keep track of, you know, one thing you worry about is, hey, we're getting a lot of guests, but they're not joining. So that point you get you, you know, what's the quality of our meeting? Or maybe the problem is, hey, look, we're not getting a lot of guests. So those records are very important to keep for the club. So before the meeting, you're gonna post the previous minutes. And we're gonna talk about minutes before in a little bit. To be honest, our club doesn't keep minutes. All right, we, we keep agendas, we keep track of who does it. Uh, we keep track of the, the visitors, but we don't keep minutes. That's really more for, from our point of view, a 
business meeting. And we don't run a business meeting at every meeting. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. But you also prepare a list of actions for the president. So as part of those minutes, a lot of times there are action items that need to come up with that. And you're gonna make sure the president has access to that. So he can follow up, he or she can follow up and say, hey, you know, Mr. VPM, you, you said you were gonna do this. How's that going? Is there any roadblocks in your way? Another very important thing that sometimes gets overlooked is make sure the officer list with TI is up to date. Now, I remember this during my program of quality year is someone who would attend a TLI and then later complain, hey, I didn't get credit for treasurer. And I would look at the records and it said, well, according to TI, you're not the treasurer. So the problem was, you know, that person was acting as a treasurer, had been assigned as treasurer, but someone hadn't gone in and updated that with TI. And that's the records that I was going off of. So you make sure you keep that up to date. Upon arrival at meetings, you're going to circulate an attendance sheet and guest book. So again, to collect the guest. Now, guess what? We're in a virtual world, so handing around a guest book is not going to work. So in virtual meetings, you're gonna reach out to each guest and make sure you have their contact information. So you can record that. And again, the VPM or somebody else can reach out to that person to see if there's any questions. During the club meeting, you're gonna read the previous minutes, note any amendments and record the current meeting minutes. So let's talk about this. I've had the opportunity to go to a lot of clubs <clears throat> and almost none of them run a, a quote unquote business meeting that requires minutes and amendments and it's like that. I would say if you are running a business meeting <clears throat> at every meeting, I would recommend moving that to the end. Why? Because the guest comes in, they're maybe nervous, they're kind of maybe excited about coming to this fun and social meeting you hear about, and then they run into Robert's rules of orders. All right, so you want to make sure that the meeting is exciting from the get-go, especially for guests that are coming in for the first time. You wanna make sure it's interesting. If you're gonna have a business meeting at every meeting, just move it to the end so you, then you can conduct business. So this brings me to my poll. So what we're gonna do here is I want you to mark on this graph what your club does. Do you have a business meeting at every meeting or never have one? And this might be something new to all of you. If you go to the top of the, the uh, Zoom window, there should be a view. And if you click that right arrow under view, there's gonna be an annotate. Under annotate, it should bring up another little bar and one of those is stamp. And understand you can pick one of the stamps. So it could be a star or a heart or a checkbox. All right, and I just want you to place that stamp somewhere on this graph so we can all see and get an idea for where we are. Do clubs have business meetings a lot? And, and if you do it like once a month, put it in the middle. If you never do it, uh, put it on the far left. If you always do it, put it on the far right. I don't see any stamps yet. You yeah. guys. That... Sorry to oh. interrupt you, but I don't think we're seeing what you're seeing. All right. I'm still but... seeing the first secretary slide. Oh, really? Yes. All right. Let me. Wow. As okay. I'm I put a stamp there, though. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me try this again. Share screen. I think I moved the window afterwards, and it kind of freaked out Zoom. Screen two. There we go. All right. Can you see the graph now? Yes, sir. All right. Has everybody found the annotation tool? I see Alicia has. So they have meetings sometimes, but not always. All right. All right. So, so you see we're all over the map here. And most of them are really to the left. Oh, now we're getting more to the right. Oh, Robert's swaying the vote here. That's fun. <laughs> all right. So you can see that every club does it just a little bit different. 
And if you have the opportunity to visit other clubs, I encourage you to do it. And you'll see that they do things a little bit different. All right, so let's go ahead and clear this, clear those annotations. So we're still talking about out the secretary and outside the club meetings. You wanna make sure you maintain an accurate roster. Now this is important. You wanna make sure you have an accurate roster of your members. You make sure that roster is up to date on the TI website. And if you use an out, another outside web website, like say Free Toast Host, you always wanna make sure that's up to date as well. I've had occasions where you know, someone has added a new member, but then they forgot to go on to free toast host and add it. So that person wasn't getting the agendas. We weren't able to add them to the agenda. So it's just a critical uh, second step. Again, submit the officer list at the end of the year after, after officer elections. Before the end of the Toastmasters year, you want to make sure that club officer list is submitted. You want to handle any correspondence if there any, and again, keep club files. I don't know if your club has papers or they have a, a virtual drive that they keep that thing, things on, but whatever, as secretary, you're responsible for that. And of course, as an officer, as with all of other officers, you're going to attend the club executive meetings. Another important thing a secretary has is a vote at the international business meeting. So it's the president and VPE at the district council meetings, but it's the president and the secretary at the international business meetings. So if you're not going to the international business meeting, which this year we had an awesome opportunity that everybody could go for no cost, then you make sure you assign that a proxy to someone who is going. So typically the district director or one of the other trio members who is going to be physically at the business meeting, make sure you sign that vote so your vote can be heard. Facilitate member progress in base camp. We heard Douglas and Lefford talk about this morning. Secretary is one of the roles that is a base camp manager club. So you have to make sure that you keep that up to date. Coordinate with the other base camp managers just to make sure everybody gets processed quickly. As with all officers, especially towards the last half of the year, last quarter, you're gonna start thinking about who's going to replace you and even start preparing that successor for the transition. So that, as I mentioned, is what TI says the officer role is. So now we have what our members say it is. For this, we're gonna turn it right over to Coulter Templeton. Coulter, take it away. Ah, thank you, Bob. Can you hear me? Just making we, sure my microphone works. We can. All right. So as you heard from Bob, not all the clubs run their meetings the same way. So Bob and I sent out a survey to current and past officers to kind of get some of their best advice to pass on to you. And we did get some great feedback. We had so much feedback, I couldn't include it all in, the, in this slide presentation. But as you can see, some really good advice here is for secretaries is to take time to do your meeting minutes. And that's for those clubs that do do the meeting minutes. And make sure you capture all the names and contact information for all the visitors, because that's important for your vice president of membership to make sure that that vice president of membership can follow up with those visitors as well. And of course, you want to do it right away because things get busy in life and make those minutes available to the membership, especially for the ones who may not have been at the meeting. It helps encourage infrequent members to attend. And of course, you want to be organized and even if you can't attend the meeting, have a backup uh, that could take notes on your behalf. And by now, you've probably learned the basics of the role or position. But if you don't, now's a good time to go back and read up on your position or take notes during this slide presentation. And utilize free Toast Toast service as a way to store your minutes. I know my club, Richland 2500, does it. So when we log in to our website, we can see the minutes from past meetings. Next, Bob. If you don't have a solid meeting minute template, reach out to some secretaries from other clubs. I know Douglas Wilson is a great resource for me that 
perhaps he might have something that he could share with you. And take lots of notes. It's better to take more notes and not enough notes to make sure you're sending out the information. And be as organized as possible. And again, read up on your responsibilities for your position because you may be afraid to ask questions of other officers, especially the president. And be creative. You should be allowed to be creative and put spin on your own general tasks to make it interesting. I have some specific members that wanted to share some of their best advice. Chloe Singleton, who is a past secretary for the Low Country Toastmasters Club, gives her best advice. Document meeting minutes and use in a fill-in form, which makes it as easy and quick as possible. Perhaps reach out to Chloe for that fill-in form. And be sure to document which pathway, level, and speech project each speaker delivered, as well as the title of their speech. It serves as a valuable resource for the Vice President of Education as they are keeping track of our club members distinguished club program. And know who won in the meeting category, table topics, speaker and evaluator. Some positive changes Chloe saw in herself in her role as secretary, it made her feel better as a listener as well as gave her confidence that she could document meetings in a thorough, comprehensive manner efficiently. In the past, she always shied away from serving as a secretary. Not anymore, Chloe. And another member, Teresa Dinius, a past secretary for the Dolphin Toastmasters. Her best advice, make sure that you take notes during the meeting or complete a secretary fill-in blank routine. Fill in the blank routine, just like Chloe said. It makes it a lot easier when you're writing up minute, minutes, 30 minutes after the meeting, not 30 days. <laughs> and I recommend writing the minutes immediately. That way you don't forget important things that happened. I know in my mind I would. I guess that's because I'm over 50. But that's what happens to us, right, Bob? <laughs> so what is a valuable lesson that she learned in the virtual meeting? She cannot emphasize this enough. Plan, 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 communicate, communicate, communicate and try and send the meetings to every member so they have an idea of what happened at the meeting and keep a roll call of those members present. Well, thank you, Chloe and Teresa, for your thoughtful advice and everybody else who gave us feedback to help you going forward in your role as secretary. Here's a few resources that you might rely upon. And if you don't Write this down quickly. I'm sure these slides will be made, made available on our district website. We're gonna move on to the next role. It's the role of the bookie. Wait, no, wait, I'm sorry, not bookie. Sorry, Bob, sorry. You told me to do treasurer, right? Okay, so we're gonna move on to treasurer. To be a treasurer, you should know how to write a check, right? Well, don't take for granted that the younger generation knows how to write a check. They might not have ever had a check in their possession. So take the time to take this learning opportunity for maybe some of your younger, younger members who want to step up into the role, but are afraid. It's a great learning opportunity because as the treasurer, you are the club's accountant and you do keep the financial records and you do have to write checks. <laughs> but it is a great opportunity for those who've never balanced a checkbook before. Don't be afraid. And how many times a year do you actually hear from the treasurer? What is it? Two times a year, Bob? September and March, right? We should hear from the treasurer a little bit more than those two times of the year because they should be collecting membership dues throughout the year for new members. And they should be reporting to the club on the finances of the club. And I will caution you right now, finance, finance officers out there, we need to start utilizing the virtual and remote way to collect dues. There's PayPal, there's Venmo, there's Cash App, 
And some of them do have a processing fee, which you should include in your club budget if you're going to utilize some of those remote ways to collect membership dues. And be a part of preparing that budget. And of course, you've probably already done it already. Your name's on the signature card at the bank. <laughs> and if you haven't done it already, you should be submitting membership applications online. If you don't know how, ask one of your fellow officers to help you. Again, don't assume that the treasurer has ever reconciled a bank account. If they haven't, reach out to a past treasurer. They can help them. Bob, do we have some feedback from our survey, survey for these treasurers? In fact, we do. So the first thing that came back in the surveys, the most popular thing is keep it simple. It doesn't have to be a complicated process. I remember when I first joined Toastmasters, it was only after three months they voted me as treasurer, which I thought was kind of odd for some guy they just met and they're going to hand over the all the keys to the kingdom. But I was treasurer and I was getting all the materials from the previous treasurer. And she says, you know, I'll, I'll give you the materials, but there's no checks. We don't have a checkbook. And so she came and gave me this big box of materials. Whoop. I said, oh, no, what have I gotten myself into? This is so complicated. And I start going through this box. And it was like 95% garbage. I mean, not little, literally Snickers wrappers, but I'm talking about it was bank statements from like five years ago. They, they got a bank statement. They just threw it, threw it in the box. They just threw it in the, and so there was no processing. It wasn't simple. It, they made it overly complicated. And guess what? Part of that 5% of paper that I found when I went, went through there was a checkbook. So they had a checkbook the whole time. They didn't even know it because it was lost in all this stuff, all right? Another thing, make sure you establish a clear start point at the beginning of your term. So don't just say, yeah, I'll be treasurer. And then six months down the road, they say, you know, where did all the money go? I thought we had this amount of money. Now you're saying we only have that amount of money. Where did it go? And he's like, I don't know. It's just what was there. So make sure when you take on the role, you not only get the current amount of money in the bank, but then you make sure all the officers are aware of that, if not all the members. Like, uh, welcome, it's January 1 or July 1, and we have X amount of dollars in the bank. So, so that way that sets that starting point that then there, nobody can say anything like, what would you do with all the money? Along with that, make sure you establish clear procedures for how you're going to do transactions. All right, you get money in for dues, you pay money out for supplies, make sure you, everybody has a clear, transparent way to view all those. Another great, great tip is communicate with other treasurers to see what kind of tracking system they use. That's part of what I always loved about the TLIs is this kind of interaction where, hey, this is what I do and it kind of didn't work. And someone else says, well, I did that similar, but I did it differently and then it worked really well. So that kind of interaction with other members is invaluable. Uh, similar, insist on having the account audited before accepting the rule. So make sure everybody understands in a very transparent way where the money is, all right? You're, you're dealing with club money not your money, so you want to make sure everybody understands where it is and there's you know no misunderstandings. Communication beyond the club meeting. So the president or the other vice presidents or whatever should be communicating with the treasurer all throughout the month, not just at club meetings. All right. So again, communication is key. When you pay, when somebody pays make sure that you give the right person credit, all right? This is true at TI, you make sure that give that right person credit, but also like a free toast toast, if you use that, there's a way to mark what's being used, who has been paid, so you don't get invoices after you've already been paid. 
try to determine the club financials and what the requirements are for the club. For example, if, you, if you're buying coffee, if your club supplies coffee and you pay for that, you make sure that's budgeted. One new budget item for many clubs this year was a Zoom account, all right? Did you account for a Zoom account? Are you gonna renew that next year? If you don't have one, are you, is your club interested in getting one? If so, we have to include that in the budget, maybe increase the dues if that's gonna cause a burden on the, the fund, all right? One thing is, says, don't wish the world to be different than it is, but rather accept it as it is. So that's true, all right? You're given a set of procedures you have to follow, or you're giving a club climate that you, you need to behave. It doesn't mean you can't change anything. It just means you can't change everything all at once to meet your needs. Make a change that benefits the club, implement it, wait for it to get accepted, and then you can put another change in place if you see one is still needed. <clears throat> prepare yourself before the event. So I've been in a club meetings before and say, hey, how much money do we have in our account? And suddenly they're pulling out, I, I don't know, pulling out emails or pulling, trying to pull out their phone, trying to figure it out. So you should have a good, you should have an exact amount of what's in the club dues at any club meeting. Some specific advice from Catherine Dumma. She's treasurer of Clemson Toastmasters. And I love this one, set a deadline for the dues two weeks before the TI deadline. Two weeks, all right? The, the goal is not March 30th, the goal is March 15th. That keeps your club members in good standing as required for contests. So what typically happens in the fall, we have fall contest and spring, we have spring contest. And there have been times when candidates are eligible to compete except for the fact that their dues haven't been turned in by the treasurer. They paid their dues, they've done their job, but the treasurer just hasn't submitted it yet. They're thinking they have plenty of time, I'll do that later, all right? Make sure you do that two weeks early and you turn it in, you submit it as soon as it's turned in. Same thing with the other, other club members, like, yeah, I'm a paid member, but in order to compete in a speech contest, your club has to be a, a member in good standing, all right? Another very, very valuable one, make sure you have two members that are signatory on the bank account. And the example she goes here, she talks about here, we had a club in the upstate where the treasurer died, which is unfortunate. However, he was, that means they didn't have access to the, the signatory on the bank account. So they went to the bank and tried to get it signed over and took the obituary and everything like that. And guess what? His name wasn't even on the bank account. The person on the bank account was like two or three treasurers ago, and he was now living in Texas. So they had to go through a lot of wrangling to get control of that bank account. Always a good idea, whether you know you have to move away and you don't think about it or, or something happens, you're not a member of the club anymore, that you have at least two signatories on that bank account. And just a reminder, it's the club's bank account. It's not your personal piggy bank. Make sure anything you do with that money is for the good of the club. And just a reminder that at no time can club dues being used to be paid for membership dues. So you can't gift a membership with club dues to somebody, uh, whether you just wanna honor them or they're, they're having a financial problem. You can't do that with club dues. You can do it outside of club dues if you want, not with club dues, keep that in mind. Also from Albert Harris, who's a treasurer, former treasurer of Richard 2500, use Free Toast Host to track member payments. Again, if you're using Free Toast Host, it's a great service and it keeps track of who has paid and then you can send invoices to anybody who has not paid. Be persistent with virtual meetings. It, some members are slow to do the virtual meetings. They don't feel as engaged. But if you're persistent, Toastmasters has something valuable to offer and they'll see that eventually. Make sure you have a better understanding of all the officer roles. And that's one of the reasons we like to do these TLIs where you get to see all the officers because we wanna make sure all the officers understand what all the, all the other officers are responsible for so that they can help. So just keep that in mind. Again, the additional resources will have this presentation available. You can also go, just go to toastmaster.org and, and look for the treasure duties or the club officer kit, and you'll find that. 
Let's roll on to Sergeant at Arms. No, I said earlier that every club does something differently, but I'm assuming that all the clubs give a standing ovation to their Sergeant of Arms as he marches in with the ceremonial mace, right? That's, I'm sure everybody does it that way. Well, not really. But when I found this picture, and it was available in the Creative Commons, just to follow up, it, this actually came with an interesting story. This gentleman's name is Kevin Vickers, and he's a Sergeant at Arms at the Canadian House of Commons. Now, for the most part, you see the Sergeant at Arms sort of walk in with the big ceremonial mace and sit down, and that's kind of all he does. But the real duties of a Sergeant at Arms is to protect, protect the body. And he took that seriously. He didn't just take that as a ceremony. And he was actually armed with a handgun. And the day before this was taken, he defended the House of Commons and killed a terrorist attack. So that's why you see a standing ovation for him. And that, why well, I thought that was an interesting story, but I also thought it has a great for this role because sometimes Sergeant of Arms is kind of overlooked as like, oh yeah, it's just the guy who moves the chairs or opens the room. But you take that role seriously and do your duty, they'll, they'll give you a standing ovation, I'm sure. All right, so this is a person in a physical world res responsible for doing the room reservation. Now, I know there are clubs that are meeting re in real life, and so that Sergeant of Arms is still doing that. I also know a lot of clubs use the Sergeant of Arms as the Zoom master, all right? And you sure there are club supplies. So again, if you're still meeting in person, make sure that's happening. I arrive early to make sure the room is set up, the tables and chairs, because you don't want a guest walking into chaos. It's like, hey, we gotta move this chair, where are these tables, where's the lectern, all that stuff. You wanna arrive early. Sergeant of Arms should be the first one to arrive. Again, check the room temperature. When a guest come in, Sergeant of Arms should be one of those people that greet the guest, along with actually all the other officers, and in reality, all the other members should, should, should greet guests. But the Sergeant of Arms is responsible for making sure that person gets the guest book, signs a guest book, or we, some way to get the contact information. If you're doing a virtual meeting, you arrive early to your virtual meeting. You wanna make sure that your audio and video settings are all working correctly. As people come on, you can help them debug that information. So as I said earlier, a lot of clubs are using SAA to be the Zoom master, where some are not. So maybe the SAA is not interested or somebody else owns the account. So I'd like to get an idea from you guys, again, using that annotation tool. Remember, view, annotate, click one of the stamps and just click somewhere on that graph that represents what your club is doing. Is your SAA the Zoom master? Someone else is a Zoom master. We're not running virtual meetings. All right, so we're seeing a winning vote here. We don't have to do a hand recount or anything like that. So someone else is typically the Zoom master. And, and to be honest, in our the two clubs I'm in, it's the same way. Is there's somebody else who owns the account or is an expert at Zoom, and we don't rely on the Zoom master to necessarily learn that. But if the Zoom master, if the SAA is interested in doing that and wants to grow in the role, this is an excellent opportunity to do that. All right, so go ahead and clear those annotations. All right, let's clear them one more time. During the club meeting, you're gonna welcome the late arrivals. If you're on a virtual, maybe just private text them, say, hey, welcome, we've already started a meeting, but I'd like to welcome you. Um, coordinating food service, if you're gonna have those in, you know, in-person meetings and collect ballots and tally votes when necessary. And you could also do that in virtual meetings, right? I don't know how you guys do it, but maybe send a private, if you're voting for best speaker or best table topics, you can send a private message to the SAA with your vote. After the club meetings, return the room to the original configuration. Now I think uh, both the clubs I'm in have free meeting space. And I think a, there's a lot of clubs like that, that, that somebody provides, is nice enough to provide that meeting space. Always return the meeting space better than when you found it, all right? That's just good, good behavior, but also as a thank you to the host 
to make sure it's good. So SAA is responsible for that. All the members are responsible for that. SAA's duties is to make sure that happens. Again, if you're in person, pack up the stores, dispose of trash. If, if you're able and your SAA, stay online until the, all the guests leave, especially all the guests, all right? That way, if the guest is kind of nervous about asking a question with everybody there, they don't want to look silly or something like that. If it's just you and the guest, they might be more willing to open up and ask questions to get understanding. So make sure the SAA, if it's possible, if it has to go to work or something like that, make sure there's somebody that stays until the last guest leave. Outside of meeting locations, you're outside the club meetings, you're gonna make sure you have that meeting location scheduled. Make sure you have the supplies. If you don't have supplies, make sure you reach out to treasurer to see what the budget is to buy more supplies. Again, all like all officers, you're gonna attend the executive meeting. We're starting to maybe see some glimmer at the end of this COVID tunnel. So it's not too early to start thinking about when we can start meeting in person, you know, what's that gonna look like? Uh, for one of our clubs, Leadership Laboratory, we have a plan when we start meeting in person, we're also going to offer a virtual uh, option. So that does two things, right? For those that are going to be nervous coming back to the club physically, then we're going to have that option where they can still participate. But also, if you're outside the area or traveling or, you know what, you're, you live in, say, Columbus, Ohio, and you want to join our Leadership Laboratory, that's going to allow that to keep going. Not too early for the club officers and really the club members to start thinking about that. Advice from our members. For this, let's go back to Coulter. Oh, thank you, Bob. So the Sergeant at Arms for many clubs has felt kind of lost during this period of virtual meetings as really not knowing their value or what they should be doing. So some of the answers that we have here relate to virtual meetings, but also relate to in-person meetings. So however it applies to your club, take that advice. One of the things I really like this first one is this can apply to absolutely every officer's role today. It is important to make phone calls outside the meeting time to maintain relationships. In my club, Richmond 2500, we have several older members who just have not participated in the virtual world, are not going to, they're just biding their time waiting for us to get back face to face. So we wanna make sure that we engage somehow with those members. Emails may not work, text messages may not work, Zoom meetings do not work, but good old fashioned pick up the phone and dial and just say hi is a great recommendation. Also, as an officer, as a Sergeant at Arms or any other role, it's important that you understand the other roles. That's why we have them all combined in, these, in this TLI training. You will be much more valuable if you know the club needs and thinks of your job through their needs. For example, in my club, we had our Vice President of Membership became ill. And she said, I'm gonna be out at least six weeks. I stepped into the role because I had been a vice president of membership before. And our treasurer, another example, he's in school. And during school, he just could not send out the emails to collect the dues. So one of our previous treasurers stepped into the role and filled in for him. So we have a plan of when they come back and when the fill in or the substitute steps back out. So it's important to have that in place, especially during this time, because you never know when somebody will get sick. So that leads to the other advice of recruit an assistant sergeant at arms to cover you when you're down in your absence and communicate with each other in advance. Now, as Bob said, the sergeant at arms sets the stage and the vibe of the meeting. Your sergeant at arms should be energetic, positive, and engaging of current members and guests because they may be the first person that is seen when somebody joins a meeting, whether online or in person. Next slide. 
This is what another sergeant at arms said. When we were in the conference room, I always got there early and had the room set up. Now that we are virtual, I'm on there first and help to make sure the agenda is filled. That's important because I know my club str struggles at times filling the agenda. And that is a lot of pressure on the vice president of education. If your sergeant at arms could back up your VPE, all the better to fill that agenda. And greet the members and guests at the door and virtually. It's nothing like joining a meeting and all the members are talking to each other and ignoring the guest. Make sure that that sergeant at arms is the one that is first to greet that, that visitor. And get a good Zoom master for your club. Hey, we all didn't know how to be a Zoom master to begin with, and some of us have mastered it better than others, right, Douglas? Bob? Robert? I think there's many of you out there that have really mastered this now that you could provide some training for some of these other sergeant at arms who want to master Zoom master. And always be thinking ahead the next two meetings. Are we gonna need any materials virtually? Would be nice to have them available to be able to email them out. And how can you help the meeting flow better? And always be prepared. And of course, I have advice from some very distinguished and experienced sergeant at arms. Bob? Our very own Mike Ward was a past sergeant at arms with the seven, he is with the 7 a.m. Toastmasters Club. His best advice, COVID-19 has hit us hard and the sergeant at arms is primarily responsible for making sure the meeting area is set up and prepared for four meeting. Well, since Zoom is the new meeting location and will be for a while, he strongly suggests learning everything you can about the club's online meeting tool. And his valuable lesson he wanted to share with you in a virtual meeting is patience. Have a lot of patience. Have you noticed how well this TLI is going today? That just didn't happen by chance. It took a lot of patience and it took a lot of practice. So another member, I'm sure many of you have seen Robert Bachman in our live TLIs because he has served as a Sergeant at Arms many times for Millennium Toastmasters, Next Level Speakers and Acers Toastmasters, just to mention a few. His valuable lesson in the virtual meeting is, don't forget to mail out the meeting link to the members and guests. That's very important. And positive changes he saw in himself, he became more organized. And his biggest challenge, well, is having a stable connection to host Zoom meetings. That was a challenge. And I remember when Robert was trying out the Zoom meetings in Millennial, Millennium's Toastmasters because I attended via Zoom and participated. And that was a challenge. And his best advice, keep track of the club materials and supplies. You probably haven't looked at them in quite a while since you've taken on this role. So wherever you have those materials and supplies as you start planning your time back together face-to-face, -face, you might wanna start taking a look at your supplies, see what's been updated at TI and see if you do need to order more materials because we will be face-to-face -face soon. And of course we do have some additional resources for treasurers out there. Well, Bob, what time is it? I think it's Q&A time. So folks, Coulter and I are gonna entertain some questions, some ideas, some, uh, if you have some tips, additional tips that you wanna share with the other officers, please share them. Now we have about 10 minutes and then we're gonna have a little bit of conclusion. I did have a, a private chat sent to me from Malvary. She said, our club records the Zoom meetings and they attach the link to the meeting roles. I mean, the meeting notes and any watch outs to recording meetings. The recording becomes the minutes and their minutes become the impression of the evening <clears throat> and how she felt during the meeting. And then uh, outstanding what was outstanding, the winners, announcements, and attendees. Great advice, Malvary. Thank you. 
I see a question here. Uh, I don't know, Katrina, if you see any, I saw a private chat from, from Nellie Cloninger. What are considered historical records? Good question. We don't, uh, at Clemson, we don't have too many, but we do have some like old agendas from, you know, like our 10 year anniversary, uh, pictures from s some of the early speech contests. So we do keep those, but we don't have like necessarily uh, charter documents or constitutions or anything, uh, uh, legal type documents. We just have some historical things that we'd like to keep. So Bob, I, I, I would mention that things like the club, the club constitution and bylaws are actually available online at Toastmasters International. So there's not really a need for a separate document for each club. Correct. Diana. Oh. Diana, you're muted. Yep. Great afternoon, everyone. Uh, one of the things that I had noticed is I have a low member club and we were not getting new members in. And we had to deal constantly with the bank account getting suspended because we didn't have activity. We're in a credit union mm. and we have to have activity every six months. Well, that wasn't happening. And so what I had done is I talked to the bank and what we came up with is every month I would have automated deposits of $2 going from checking to savings. So I'm doing that for the first six months and for the next six months, I'm having the money deposited to the other account, vice versa. So at the end of the year, my account is still balanced from what I had sent to the checking and then what I sent back to the, the savings. And that way we show and activity. So that's something that I didn't think about all this time, um, being treasurer in different clubs and, and credit unions might be different than banks, but that's what we had experienced. And that was the solution that I came up with. Great advice. I know Douglas raised a hand. Douglas, did you have something to say? Of course. Yes, I just wanted to make a note. You made a comment earlier about uh, taking notes during the event. Uh, I have updated our uh, resources on our club website, 4848.toastmastersclubs.org, in the uh, public downloads TLI resources. I have a blank form that we use to take the secretary's notes, minutes, and I also have included the uh, a, a copy of Saturday AM's 10, 24, 20, uh, notes that were the finished product of handwritten notes off the one. So we've got before and after to see what they look like before and what they look like after. And it's I a blank, so you can use it as a template. I knew you would. <laughs> Thanks, Douglas. That's what, that's what I do. <laughs> so Coulter, I've got a couple of questions, not sure. necessarily on these roles, but it talks about the hybrid meetings that we were talking about and any tips or tricks. And I'll just share, I've, I've been, uh, I attended a number of clubs that were doing hybrid meetings. And for the most part, it worked well. The thing you got to watch is if you're the camera and the audio. It, it's kind of kind of along with what Darren was saying earlier is if you position it such that you can see the speaker on the camera, you can hear the speaker on the microphone, and then the timer in the back of the room stands up and gives the timer presentation, you probably won't be able to hear it. So keep in mind the audio, particularly the audio, but also the video uh, for the remote viewers. I saw Linda Wright had a hand. Linda? Yes. In our Aiken Club, I have two instances where past secretarial minutes were very important. When one of our members was applying for her DTM. She couldn't remember when she had done one of the activities that was required for her advanced leader gold. And we had to go back through the minutes to find where she had actually accomplished that in order for her to complete her application. When Clyde Smith was applying for his DTM, He's been a member since 1970 something, and he was a uh, past uh, 
district or area, um, gov we called them area governors at the time, and he needed to show that he had been, had done that. And of course at Toastmasters International, they had already changed, they had already changed things so that they, they didn't have, uh, sorry about that. I just discovered my <laughs> microphone was covered. They, they had just discovered that the, uh, they didn't have their records going back very far because that once they had digitized, he wasn't included. But Ned Wallace could remember when that happened because he had records of his own. So he was able to help Clyde to testify that he had accomplished that particular job so that he was able to earn his DTM. So those are two times when maintaining those historical records from year to year becomes very important. All right, thank you, Linda, very important uh, point. So I, I'm gonna address one more question that was here, then we're gonna turn it back over to Coulter to wrap us up. Beverly Green asked a question of their former treasurer is no longer a member and having trouble getting that member to show up at a bank to sign over their records. Any advice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be really between you and the bank if you really can't get that person to go up. So two, two things. One is if you could take official club minutes to show that that person is no longer the treasurer and who, who is now the treasurer, uh, that may convince and, and be nice to the, to the bank lady. Uh, that should convince them and, and let them move it over. Second thing is that really emphasizes the point of having two signatories. So if that happens again, the other person can go in and say, hey, we got to remove Jack and put in Jill, and then we're good. Coulter, you have a few parting thoughts for us. I sure do. If you can move. Thank you. Now, Douglas and Lefford, we did not coordinate teamwork makes the dream work, but we were on the same vibe because, yes, you are right. <laughs> It does take a team to make the meetings enjoyable experience for your members and guests. Now, I do have a question for everybody. Just keep the question, the answer to yourself. But does your club have an executive committee? Do your officers meet regularly? Now, during these extraordinary times, it is more important than ever that our officers stay connected because we don't see each other face to face. We don't have that human contact. We don't have that connection anymore. And in an executive committee, it's an opportunity to share ideas and brainstorm. And if one officer is having a situation they can't handle, the other officers can help them. You can learn from each other. You can learn each other's roles. So when somebody can't perform their duties, somebody else can just step in. And you need to be willing to step in. Like I said, in my own club, we've had a couple of members step in, a couple of officers. And always remember, it is about the member's experience. You want to provide a great experience for the members, and you have to understand what the members want from the club as well. Next slide. There are many benefits to an executive committee. In the, in the executive committee, you create the budget, you develop a club success plan, you strategize for success in the distinguished club program, and you create and oversee other club committees. And now's the time to start creating your transition plan to live meetings. It's really easy to get your club committee members together now because you don't have to find a location to meet. We all meet from home. So all you have to do is select a date and a time and a Zoom link and you are all together once again. So I encourage everybody there, everybody out there, if you are not meeting and perhaps 
the leader of your club is not really leading your club right now, I have a couple of resources for you on the next slide that you can take to your club president and say, we really would like to build a healthy team. Here's all the materials we need. We really wanna build a quality club. Here's all the materials we need. So beware, my, my own officers, we are doing this and we're going to be the best officers in Toastmasters and we, example, why don't you set the example for future officers in your own club? It'll be a much easier transition when you leave your position come June 30th to find another officer to fill your role. And I wanna say thank you to everybody. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. And thanks, Bob. It was really easy for Bob and I to put this presentation together because we were on the exact same wavelength. Right, Bob? She was reading my mind. I think she was reading my emails or something. So. <laughs> All right, with that, we'll turn it back over to our Toastmaster of the day, Katrina.